Hold on, everybody. Brent Keaton here, Dylan Delancey. All right, we're back again. Been the same week. Pulled another video. Uh, we have a comment on our last video. Yes. I'll go ahead and read it off. It's a good thing to talk about. I figure I would. Yeah, this is a, something that's really been uh, a lot of controversy about this in the gun industry. So, and there's probably a lot of other guys out there and women that think the same. That are thing. concerned about this, and we'll give our, our input about it. Give our insight and what we know already about the law. So, so basically, this guy says, "What do you think about carrying at work?" And regardless of what company policy says, do you think that it be the company's decision? If it doesn't affect the job performance, um, so this is uh, what our one of our subscribers said. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a good good topic. Uh, so basically, he can start off. We work in completely different environments, both of us. Yeah. You can start off, and then I'll add into it. So I just want to go over right now what the law in Ohio says. Uh, this was not too long ago. I want to say a few years ago. Uh, the state house and the Senate and the governor, they passed a bill that basically says companies cannot violate the Second Amendment uh, to a certain degree, which means for concealed carriers out there, people which, when you're like us and you live in Ohio, we don't have a CCW, we have a CHL. So here we don't have a concealed uh, carry weapons. Well, I mean, that's how they see it as. That's how they that's title it out. Kind of what we nickname right. it because in other states that's what it's called. Here we have a CHL. It's a concealed handgun license. It has to be a handgun. There's no limit on how big the handgun can be. You can even carry AR pistols uh, with a pistol brace that's considered a handgun. As long as you can conceal it. As long as you can conceal it. So in your backpack or if you have it in a truck, use it as a truck gun. Yeah, absolutely. But they basically said that they cannot take it from your property or tell you to not keep it in your vehicle. So basically right now, uh, you can go to your job and you are allowed to leave your gun in your car, whether or not you're allowed to carry on company property inside the premises or outside the premises is totally up to the company regarding their policy. So some companies say that you can't they say, no, it's a no-gun, gun-free zone. You're not allowed to come inside and you know, carry a weapon on you. Or some will say, yes, you're allowed to. Um, but, yeah, as of right now, you're allowed to go to work and keep your gun in your car as long as uh, it has to stay in your car, on the property, in a safe place like you would normally have. Um, and it's, uh, it's up to the, the company, basically, to make that call whether or not you want to you're able to carry inside or outside or while you're working, let's just say that. And so for me, you know, I work in an environment where there's not a whole lot of people bunched in one area together. Like I operate heavy equipment, so I'm obviously isolated from everybody else, I guess you could say. And there's a lot of other people that are isolated as well from everyone else. So in my situation, I personally probably wouldn't carry one on me during work hours. I'd probably keep it in my vehicle because the fact that I'm around flammable fumes and gas and oil and all that stuff. This goes for uh, people who work on pipeline too around here. Exactly. People that work on oil, out in the oil fields. Um, not sure if it would be, I, I don't know. I, I can't make that call. I don't know if it would be a great idea, but I wouldn't also be totally against it either. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, you I have the right to defend yourself regardless. I, I agree it's a good idea to carry at work because anything I think I, I think it depends on what kind of work you do. Uh, me, I work in a very large uh, diesel engine factory. We build diesel engines uh, for pretty much the whole world. Um, in a factory, we seen, this was roughly a couple years ago, two or three years ago. I know it was in one of the Carolinas. It may have been one of the Carolinas anyways. I just remember the story. There was a guy that went into his, uh, the factory that he worked in. It was a brewing factory. I think they made like beer or mm -hmm. something. And unfortunately he shot up like five people. Uh, a couple people ended up dead. 
And obviously, if somebody you know, on the premises would have had a firearm, it would have been stopped and it could have been prevented. Um, I, I think more congregated areas where there's a lot more close quarters, you know, when you're working next to a lot of people, I do think that companies should allow you to carry on premises. Um, you know, I think what you should actually, you should be able to, yeah in close, close areas and places in general. He said there's obviously places like where he works where there's uh, flammable fumes and out on pipelines and stuff like that where it might be questionable, I guess. Yeah. In an area like that where it might be dangerous to actually just have a firearm in general. But if you could, the company should have, yeah. The, or you can get to it, yeah. then I highly recommend doing that. Yeah, exactly. Because regardless, it is against the law for the, any company in the state of Ohio to tell you that you can't have a gun in your car if you have a valid license to carry one. Period. They so they don't do that. Another thing we'll go over is we got a, four different guns here. I actually just picked up another yes. gun today. We'll go over four different guns that we have here, and then I got a couple different holsters. We'll go. This is a nine millimeter. Security 9 Ruger, and it's a full-size 9 millimeter. Yeah, 15 plus one in the chamber, right? Yep, exactly right. Now, this works perfect. Usually people want to go with a smaller gun um, when they're concealing. Now, he probably wouldn't buy one that big. Right, I'm a smaller guy than he is. And, uh, you know, it's my first handgun. It's actually not a bad gun to conceal at all. A lot of people actually conceal this particular yeah, gun. That's a pretty popular gun. And, you know, I'd say in most situations, if you're like an average person, you should be fine. You should be fine to conceal this. I have a inside. The good thing, the good thing about it is the capacity. I mean, I have an inside the capacity. waistband um, holster. We and I can wear this appendix carry. You know, it's not too bad. After a while, it does kind of get uncomfortable. But that's this is probably the same way. Yeah, you're not going to be like, you're not going to not feel it. It's, and this is an outside of waistband holster for the same gun. But this also works for my my 45 I just bought. This is a uh, Ruger, just like my other one, 45, American. And they're pretty similar guns. Yeah, they're almost. They're pretty similar guns. Yeah. So this actually works in this holster here, but you know it sticks out just a little bit, but it still works. I'm eventually going to get the holster made for that gun, particularly. Yeah. And the barrel is actually 3.75 inches versus this one, which is four inches. But they're pretty much actually. This 45 is actually just a smidge bit longer, actually. Wasn't expecting that, but the barrel is technically shorter, but the gun's a lot bigger. And a 45 has a lot of stopping power. He also yeah. has a 45. I carry a 45, um, so he's going over his gun, and I'll go over mine. I carry with one in the chamber, so I will. And that's a hollow point, 49 millimeter. Do these real quick. Basically, I have the same exact holsters. These are. I highly recommend them for anybody that likes to carry appendix. These are CYA supply, and from what I understand, that means covery rasp <laughs> supply. Veteran operated, veteran owned, uh, American made. So this is a Smith & Wesson bodyguard 380. This is my backup gun. This is my last resort. I don't carry it just to carry it. Uh, usually it's on me, behind me, or in a different place, and my 45, you know, is uh, a little different. I'll appendix carry this, and it's a really good gun. This is the XDS Springfield Mod 2, 3.3 inch barrel, and so it is a pretty nice gun. I do want to get different sights for it eventually. It's got fiber optic, a fiber optic front sight. And uh, like he said, you know, 45 does a lot of stopping power. It's a big debate, you know. Yeah, it really and, all depends and, and on personal preference. In the gun community, there's a big debate between whether or not people should carry a 9 mil 45. Now, obviously, you're going to have a lot more recoil out of a 45 than yeah. a 9 
or a 380. And but if you're new to carrying guns, this isn't 45 long Colt. It's a 45 automatic, 45 ACP. So basically, I have not tried to um, appendix carry this, but I, once I get a holster made for it and inside the waistband, yeah. I shouldn't have no issues at all because it's literally almost the same exact size as this. just a smidge bit longer than the 9mm. So, and uh, this gun actually holds... Seven plus one, so technically eight. And mine is exactly that minus one. And the thing have concealed, uh, well, you got your extra capacity magazine, your extended mag holds uh, one extra round. So the thing with this gun, six here, plus one, it has um, means that the handle's shorter because technically a compact um, 45, which is funny because it's actually bigger than this full size nine. It has this, it's for your pinky. Yep. You put it in the, in the handle, you know, you have a spot for your pinky. Um, so obviously, you know, we're not going to claim to be gun experts. We don't claim to be gun experts. You know, we literally are just old enough to buy our guns. So we're pretty much new to the whole handgun. Yeah. We've both been handgun shooting, handgun. let's just say this, we both we grew up around guns. We've been shooting guns our whole life. Uh, I've always, I grew up around shotguns and rifles, high-powered rifles. He was the same way. Never really shot a lot of handguns. So the concealed carry thing was new to us. I know a lot of people out there are probably feeling exactly like that. So if you're just starting out, it's... I can't, we can't just tell you what's best for you because the scenario is going to be different for everybody. You've got a 380. You know, it's a small compact gun. They make larger 380s. Uh, now, the, this, uh, the Smith & Wesson body yeah. is great for a backup gun. In my opinion, I think a 380 is perfect for smaller people. Like, yeah, like I mean, they, they, yeah, especially for and, something like this when it's know, not really big, it's easier to conceal. It's definitely it's pretty definitely easy to conceal. It's definitely a lot easier to conceal. But Even... The minus Even side is the sights are a little hard to see on the Smith Wesson bodyguard, but even a uh, compact nine millimeter, and this isn't compact, obviously, but even a smaller nine millimeter is perfect for you, for just about anybody. And this, you know, this isn't like I said much bigger than that nine, and this is, I'd say, it's pretty much perfect for me. Now he probably wouldn't use this gun to conceal. No, but for me, depending on the scenario, perfect. if I carried outside the waistband and I had a vest on to cover it or a jacket, it, it would be possible for me. Uh, but definitely when you're trying to get it, you know, inside your pants or something, yeah, it's not going to be possible for me to conceal that unless I wear, you know, an extra large hoodie and mm -hmm. look like a complete idiot. So. So yeah, really, um, there's a lot of different options, and like I said, we can't just recommend something to you. you can't because recommend everybody's these guns gonna be different. Everybody's different. You want to find a gun that has a comfortable trigger for you. Yeah. So, so right now, I will demonstrate this trigger. Uh, obviously, it's clear. I'm always over cautious. I'm always checking the chamber, but it's safe right now. So, um, this one had the Crimson Trace laser built into it. This has a very heavy trigger pull. And a lot of people don't like that. It's like nine and a half pounds. So when you pull it, it I already it, you have to put a good bit of pressure on this trigger, and then you pull it, pull it, pull it, and you have that long break. And it is something to get used to. It's very weird <laughs> compared to the 45, especially for the gun. Like that. So you know, the 45's got a trigger safety right here. This is the XDS Mod 2, 3.3 inch, 45, inch free field armory. Got a nice uh, push down, really easy, and then it clicks. This is like a four and a half, five pound, I think, trigger pull. So it does got a clean, nice clean break, clean reset. It is a, it's a good gun. And I'll go over these ones real quick. And if you're a small person and you want to carry a 45, this would be a good option because it is a micro compact 45. Make sure it's clear, just like he said. And this one, you know, it's not, it's really easy. I'd say it's about four and a half, five pounds as well. I like that. You know, it also has a trigger safety and a slide safety. safety. 45, this, I think, has got ampidextrous. It right? does. It has, uh, 
a mag release on both sides and a safety on both sides and that on both sides. So this has a little bit heavier pull on the slide. Yeah, the, the security yeah. nine is definitely a lot easier. And this also has a trigger safety as well. But the uh, the pulling power is also really light. I'd say it's about the same, four and a half to five pounds, which is what I like. Another thing about the XDS, uh, you have a grip safety here. And the gun will only engage, the trigger itself will only engage whenever you fully uh, grip the safety right here. And it doesn't take much. Obviously, you can see me here you know, to engage it. It's just kind of a backup safety, and you have your trigger safety. So there is no manual safety. It's just grab it, and then you have your trigger safety. So some ideas for everybody out there. You get the more full size end for 45 and 9 mil, and then you have more of a compact end over here for 45 and a 380. So all I think good options. Uh, they're definitely all good options. So just depends on the person. In the next video, we'll go. In another video, we'll go over go more in depth on what gun is for you. But technically, we can't choose that for you. Yes, we can just give you some options. So I think for this video, that'll be about it. That'll be it. Make sure, always, this is absolutely important, guys. Seriously, make sure you join the Firearms Policy Coalition. And no also joke. join the Gun Owners of America. That's essential, especially when you're a gun owner. Right now, in this crazy world where the government doesn't care about your rights at all. And if you guys have any questions, if you have any ideas that you want, please comment below. Like this comment right here that I read previously. We'll put it up here again. Yep. It'll be in the beginning and right now. And right now. So, you know, it's just a uh, potential out there. We uh, There might be stuff out there that you want to hear and that we don't know. And we can just discuss we can it. talk about it. Give, you all give our opinions, opinions on it. So, yeah, pretty much if you have any questions that you want to have, you know, your question on the next video or even the future video. After that, just comment below and we'll do our best to get it out to you. So, so, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and we will see you probably next week.